Overwatch 2 has fully released as of today, and I am sure there are a ton of new players that realized, wait, this is free to play? And I've hopped right back into the action. You've probably seen some of the bigger changes, but without going off the rails too much more, let's cover everything you've missed and how to pop off in Overwatch 2. First off, what substantial changes happened to older characters you know and love? Well, Doomfist is a tank now. No longer will he be slamming your backline and shredding your supports in one shot. Well, unless you are against Get Quaked On, he will still be managing to somehow do that. That being said, he no longer has an uppercut ability and instead has an absorption shield ability kind of like Sigma's grasp, but instead of absorbing health, it absorbs power that is sent to his next punch, making it stun more, do more damage, and travel further and faster. Because of this, he functions like an aggressive dive tank that creates a lot of forward space for his team. Arisa doesn't have a shield anymore, however, she does have a huge javelin that either skewers enemies into walls or blocks incoming damage in a forward path. Her ultimate now also pulls people in to do massive damage as opposed to a team-wide damage boosting bongo. So she isn't really a spam tank anymore, thus she functions much better with a coordinated team brawling together. Besides these two characters' reworks, there are a ton of small changes as well. For example, Zarya now has two bubbles instead of one, Winston is now a sniper monkey, Cassidy now has a homing grenade instead of a stun, and the one I know a lot of OGs will like, Brig doesn't have stun anymore. New characters have been implemented into the game as well, including Sojourn, Junker Queen, and Kiriko, but explaining how all these characters work won't help you get back up to speed and is quite frankly boring. We want to answer the big question, how was Overwatch changed and how do I play the new game? First off, the game went from 6v6 to 5v5, which is quite the astronomical change. Taking away a tank means that both the frontline and backline are less safe and have to rely heavily on mechanics, more so than the first game. You can't just waste your time shooting tanks all game, you have to find value elsewhere in some scenarios now too. Aside from that though, not a whole lot has really changed. Overwatch 2 is still, well, Overwatch. It is a team-based, objective-capturing shooter. You still have to push the payload to the end, be the king of the hill for longer, and remain triumphant on the ever-so-popular hybrid maps. Notice how I've left out 2CP maps like Hanamura though. It's gone from the game entirely and has instead been replaced by a push game mode, where both teams duke it out to push the robot to the enemy's zone. So if not a whole lot has changed and you just have to be more active within the fight, why are you watching this video then? Well, considering the fact that most players left at the start of the GOATS meta in 2019 or haven't picked up the game ever, the way we play Overwatch has changed quite a bit, and some concepts may still be new to you. So let's break down the roles. Since the implementation of 5v5, each team now has one tank player, a flex DPS player that plays projectile heroes like Genji and Echo, a hit scan player that plays characters like Sojourn and Ash, a flex support player that plays healers like Ana and Baptiste, and a main support player that utilizes supports like Lucio, Brig, and Mercy. However, in the new game, the line between what a main support player and a flex support player plays is becoming thin with more composition variety. This was seen in the recent Junker Queen Lucio Brig compositions played in Overwatch League and Contenders. Going off of this, a common misconception that has been debunked in the later stages of Overwatch was the idea that main support is the same as main healer. They are two very different things, and that is very evident in Overwatch 2 as well. The role of support is much deeper than that of just healing the team. It is about providing advantages in other ways as well, such as support and damage boosts, anti-grenades, and a ton of other helpful buffs and debuffs. So, main support players generally play characters that are not as mechanically intense, allowing them to communicate more to their team, while flex supports are expected to be much more accurate and precise. The reason this idea is being brought up is not to discuss the technicalities though, rather the fact that you should not pick supports simply for what they can heal, but rather what they provide for the team. For example, a very strong meta in Overwatch 1 for the past year was the Ball Zen Brig meta. Zen and Brigitte don't really heal a whole lot, but they make up for that in consistent damage. Combo this with the fact that the composition didn't need much healing to begin with, and then it is simple to understand why the support duo was so strong. With one less tank, I can only imagine the new idea of support will be much more prevalent, especially with the addition of heroes like Kiriko. Through observing these changes, it is clear that Overwatch 2 is a much more mechanically challenging game than its predecessor. Taking control of the tempo of the team fight will still be very important. You will simply just achieve this in different ways. For example, with one less tank, it is much easier for DPS players to find initial picks to jump off of, cycling through tank ultimates is much more difficult to pull off, and supports can't just heal all game until they get rally and win. In other words, more individual prowess will be required to win more games in Overwatch 2. Moving on, let's review how a game of Overwatch naturally flows. This is very important. When playing Valorant, a game I know a lot of Overwatch refugees fled to, you don't want to go into a ranked game with no idea how to 
to play an agent, how to retake a site, where and when to smoke, and the list goes on. The same goes for Overwatch. You do not want to log into your first ranked game with no understanding of the composition you and the enemy are playing and how they want to react throughout the fight. We will get into the specifics shortly, but let's lay out the foundation. First, before every fight begins, a plan is laid out by the tank. This plan takes into account essentially all of the information the team has, including the ultimates you have as well as the enemy, which will be tracked by your main support and the compositions that are in play. In a very basic sense, the plan should quickly discuss how your ultimates or lack thereof should be used in accordance to your enemies, how you will utilize the space the map provides, and something specific to look for if it applies. For example, a bad fight plan would be, we have shatter, let's shatter them at the choke, compared to a better fight plan that would include, they're going to beat drop and engage on us, play at the choke and kite it out to the corner, and then we aggress after with my shatter. The latter plan is a bit lengthy, but when playing with a stronger team, less words would be used and they would understand the concepts you are describing more easily. This explanation is simply for clarity. Second, when the fight breaks out, it is important to stick to the plan, but also recognize where individual value can be found. Aside from this, just because you had a plan doesn't mean you can't talk. You have to keep up the energy and perform. The tank should be calling out rotations as well as which targets to eliminate while the supports are communicating when they need help to rotate or survive against an aggressive flanker. Lastly, when the fight is closing, this is when the preparation for phase one begins. Ultimate tracking via the main support is completed quickly and efficiently and then sent over to the main tank to create the next course of action for the team. Rinse and repeat this process throughout the game. Now that we have established the basic flow of each fight within Overwatch, the last topic we must discuss is the theory behind each composition within Overwatch. In a very basic sense, there are three different spectrums to recognize. Brawl, Spam, and Dive. Brawl wants to play close together and close the distance between them and the enemies to beat them down. Characters that function well in this environment include Reinhardt, Reaper, Mei, Lucio, and Moira. Spam style compositions want to distance themselves from the enemy and whittle them down from afar so that if they do get close enough, they will crumble to the sheer amount of damage dealt. Arisa used to be a strong anchor for this composition in Overwatch 1, but now in Overwatch 2, Sigma redefines what it means to create a spam composition. Characters like Hanzo, Echo, and Ash also do very well in those pokey spam type of compositions. Lastly, dive compositions play to surround the enemy and suffocate their cooldowns, eventually eliminating their prey. There are many different styles of dive, but most notably, characters like Winston, Tracer, Ana, and likely Kiriko will excel in this compositional environment. Understanding the basis behind how characters want to play is crucial to your success in Overwatch. If your team is playing to your strengths while exploiting the enemy's weaknesses, you will win. That is just a fact. This makes it difficult for new players to really pop off and succeed when first picking up the game though. Understand that this is normal and it just takes time. You'll get there. That being said, you have found a great spot to learn more about Overwatch 2 through my channel. If you are looking to continue your improvement process, consider subscribing or joining the Discord where a ton of players just like you are looking to support one another, whether it be through giving helpful advice or through picking up a few games in a group. I also plan on streaming a lot more now that Overwatch 2 is out, so check out all my socials in the description for more content. Thank you all so much for watching, but until next time, I've got a peace out and pass out. I'll see you in the next one.